Learn how to stop worrying and hug a camel. Learn how to stop worrying and paint a camel. Learn how to stop worrying and change the lens. This camera has an eye. It's called the lens. Depending on what lens you put on the camera, the reality and perspective changes entirely. See, it looks like an eye. So here you have a young man's face, very beautiful bearded man. But there's only a face. You don't, have, you, don't, you don't have anything else in context. But it's a beautiful cinematic moment, nonetheless. Oh, there, there you have it. It's the same face, but now the face has a body. There's a brick wall in the background. There are roses in the foreground. There's a TEDx sign lying around in the sofa. There is context. And with the context, well, for a filmmaker, you have to search for the context. And for, to search for the context means, well, what is the truth? You have to search for your truth even if you don't want to say it, but still you have to look for it. Is this truth? We don't know. Um, you have to decide, are you going to show a camel in the desert, alone? Are you going to show the camel with people interacting? Are you going to go to Texas, to a zoo, and show the camels pretending to be in Africa? Are you going to go to Kenya and pretend to be in Somalia? Well, in this 24-7 social media environment, you can't rely on your audience just to get all their information through text. And video is an excellent tool. Video as a multi-sensory experience you can distill information and just ram it in and just, you can, yeah, you can have all that information in, a, in small format. A year ago, our focus was camels. We were in India uh, filming with the camel people. Now they, um, I could tell you the way that they dress. I could tell you the way that they move with the camels. I could tell you how they decorate the camels and the camels dance. How they wear these bangles as I am wearing today. Now, or I could show you the video. So, what is your responsibility as a filmmaker walking this earth? Are you focusing on the entertainment value, the art value, the information value, or just pure curiosity factor? Whatever you do, you have to expect the unexpected. A few years ago, we were filming in Papua New Guinea. In Papua New Guinea, the tourism board says the slogan, expect the unexpected. Now, we were uh, filming for three days with an Australian volunteer and he took us up a mountain uh, to a village. Now these guys suddenly jumped out from around the corner towards where we were going and out from the grass surrounding us. They had machetes and this guy in the middle had a machine gun. We were really scared. We thought, okay, these guys might take all of our equipment. They might harm us. They might even rape us. Um, the guy in the middle was actually the second most wanted criminal in all of Papua New Guinea. He had recently escaped from jail and after robbing a bank. He believed that he was the Robin Hood of his community. He stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Now, while we were uh, seeing our lives flash before our eyes, our volunteer uh, Australian guy was talking to them in the local language, talk pidgin and he started laughing. Now apparently, this was our welcome to the village. These guys were his friends, they were criminals, and we were able to find more about them as we went on. So yeah, this bad guys engage in guerrilla warfare. We engage in guerrilla filmmaking. And what is guerrilla filmmaking? Guerrilla filmmaking involves taking all, our, all your gear with you, maybe crossing a river, engaging with the communities in the most basic ways, because some, most of the time, language is the biggest barrier you have to cross, not the river. You have to be 
you have to be able to cook with them, eat with them, play with their children, engage in the most basic ways. And who is a, a guerrilla filmmaker? My background, um, I was raised by very worldly parents. My mother is not shy to tell people that I was conceived in Africa. I was also a Montessori child. I learned at an early age to make my own choices in the classroom. The teacher was not the master, they were just a guide. By the age of 12, I realized that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And a few years later, I was in Mexico and met a cinematographer. I sat down with him to do a time lapse and asked him, you know, my worry, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to uh, carry this heavy equipment. And he said, don't worry, you'll find someone to carry it for you. Um, that's where I come in, I guess. <laughs> um, but seriously, being a filmmaker involves taking a lot of chances, engaging with the community in the most basic ways. At the same time, you have to think, well, what you are going to show your, your, your audience, right? You have to know how to use your tools. And what is our most remarkable tool? Right now, our most remarkable tool is this camera. It shoots video as well as photos. And this technology only started to exist four years ago. Um, and even the uh, invention was an accident by the guy who made the camera. He said, okay, I can add this video uh, if you want. And now there is a revolution going on. These cameras produce very high quality images and have interchangeable lenses that are beautiful and easy to get and carry around. So because it's a photo camera, besides being a video camera, even if you go to the most difficult places, you have, you're not creating a reality, you're just shaping it, basically. And as you can see here, well, yeah, you have to be non-condescending, wherever you are, see the difference between the photo and the video, the same thing. The only thing that you can actually see in this photo is a yellow, yellow light in the middle of the frame. You don't know what, what's, what's behind it. You maybe have a shooting star falling, maybe you have stars, it maybe you have a starry sky, right? If you add to the same photo, you add a little bit more light, well, you can see there are a lot of stars in the background. There's a shooting star there, and you have a small, small square light in the middle of the frame. So if we add a little bit more light now, well, now you have the full, well, it's not the full picture yet, but you can see that it's a city, right? It's, it looks like a city, well, the, but there's, there's, there's something wrong with the shooting star. Instead of going down, it's coming up, right? So, okay, so now you have the full picture. I will give you a little bit of context here. This is in Mogadishu, Somalia. We were shooting there a couple of months ago. The, light, the yellow light that you saw in the beginning of the, in the first frame is actually a man cooking with fire. The small square is the only electric light in the neighborhood. This is an occupied neighborhood, abandoned buildings, but people don't even live inside the buildings. They, what you see in the, in the foreground, those lumps be, right by that car, is, is people sleeping. And what you thought was a shooting star is actually tracer bullets fired into the air. So what is our angle? What is our role in this new culture of filmmaking? Well, when we go around, we ask people uh, five questions. Who are you? What took you so long? What are you doing now that you're here? How will it feel when you get there? And if you had to do it again, how would you do it? Thank you. Thank you.